Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Monday, October 4. Residents of West Central St. Andrew will soon have increased access to reliable and safe electricity supply. This as the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development has forged a partnership with the Jamaica Social Investment Fund, JSIF, and the Jamaica Public Service, JPS, to regularize their electricity. Through the collaboration, residents' houses will be wired and certified by a qualified electrician. The program began on Friday with the JSIF carrying out assessment of the homes. When it is completed, we allow you to live in comfort, we don't have to worry about any connections that are not properly done. And they are doing that because a part of your government, your tax dollar as taxpayers, is to ensure that we provide proper service to you right here in your own community. In the meantime, Prime Minister Andrew Holness is encouraging residents of West Central St. Andrew to have their electricity connections regularized. Mr. Holness made the call Friday as he continued his vaccination mobilization tour in the area. Asserting that widespread electricity theft cannot continue, the Prime Minister said the practice is dangerous as it has led to fires and death. We are going to spend upwards of 9 million Jamaican dollars to go through the community and rectify the wiring just to make sure that all the wiring is good because you see the skill of tying the little stone on the hook and just chew it up on the wire and then you run it into your house and then you just connect to it that's very dangerous environment minister pernell charles jr has called on citizens to plant up jamaica adding that free seedlings can be collected at the forestry department Mr. Charles Jr. says the need to plant more trees is a component of the Renew Jamaica initiative, which seeks to push the country towards developed nation status. He was speaking at Friday's National Tree Planting Day ceremony. Climate change and planting trees is as important to know how we develop our housing in climate resilient communities that include resilient housing, respect for our environment, trees, purposefully built purposefully built spaces to accommodate our trees and to integrate them um, into everything we do when it comes on to our commerce or operation in the private sector um, conservation everything must include the mentality of sustainability. The Forestry Department has also forged new partnerships with members of the Private Sector Organization of Jamaica to meet the National Tree Planting Initiative of 3 million trees in three years. The PSOJ has pledged to plant 500,000 seedlings over the three-year period. National Tree Planting Day was observed under the theme Plant Trees, Restore Ecosystems and Renew Communities. Housing Minister Pernell Charles Jr. says persons displaced during the passage of Hurricanes Ivan and Dean have received a first preference at a subsidized cost to relocate to the Harbour Head Seascape development. Minister Charles says those persons were able to benefit from a significant reduction in cost following the commitment made by the government to support their relocation. The development involves the integration of sustainable practices such as rainwater harvesting, storage tanks for the units, a 100,000 gallon storage tank for the seascape community, and solar water heaters. An effort has been made here to build and to integrate the efficiency and the conservation techniques as much as possible, keeping it within a particular target market. Um, that's, not a, that's, not, that's not an easy task because when you try to integrate sustainable um, equipment, it increases cost. And so, you know, for them, they are understanding that it is an investment in the long term. It's an investment not just for this community, not just for this unit, but for the country. Minister Charles says the project is scheduled to be completed by the end of December, and the premium price per unit is $22.9 million, of which the Caribbean Terrace residents will pay $15.3 million. He was speaking while touring the construction site on Friday. The seascape housing development consists of 72 townhouse units with two bedrooms and two and a half bathrooms with provisions for air conditioning, backup water provision inside the units and backup generators.
A new outreach center has been opened in Santa Cruz, St. Elizabeth to strengthen the delivery of the Women's Center of Jamaica Foundation's program for adolescent mothers. Gender Minister Olivia Grange says the facility should become operational by mid-October. We're looking at the facility and we're now determining how we're going to uh, provide furniture and furnishing for the facility so we can start operating at this new location by mid-October. We have an outreach center injunction um, but this facility is more central and that is why, why it was so important for us to build this out and to make it available to the parish. She says there are approximately 46 girls registered at the center and approximately 36 million was spent for its construction. It houses two classrooms, a nursery, kitchen, dining facility and an administrative block. We are making appeal, we're making an appeal to the public and to service organizations and so on to donate. We will accept furniture, toys for the children and of course in this room as it is now we need to install fans in all the rooms. As you notice it's kind of hot in here. We need desks and chairs and whatever you can contribute to this center we will very much appreciate. Minister Grange was speaking at the opening ceremony. The Women's Center of Jamaica Foundation's program for adolescent mothers, PAM, is executed island-wide through the Foundation's main centers and outreach stations. It enables adolescent mothers to continue their education during pregnancy and prepares them to be reintegrated into the formal school system after they have given birth. And finally, the Women's Center of Jamaica Foundation has renovated the day nursery at its Mandeville Outreach Center. While touring the new facility, Gender Minister Olivia Grain shared that the nursery will house the babies of the adolescent mothers who are enrolled at the Mandeville Outreach Center while they're attending classes. The center can accommodate 16 babies in keeping with the COVID-19 restrictions. This nursery is new. It's a new building, $14 million dollars invested by government into this facility. Well, actually, it was done in collaboration with the Rockefeller organization. And what this underscores is that NGOs, non-government entities can assist us in this program to ensure that it's expanded and that it serves the needs of these young mothers. Minister Grange added that 36 mothers are currently registered at the center to undertake classes. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.